Dear learners, welcome to the third and the last part of the video on Unit 3 that is Functions of Management of the Course Principles of Management and Organization Behavior of BBA Program of Krishna Kanto Hondiko State Open University. In this part, we will discuss about the management skills that are needed at the various levels of management and we will also discuss about the Indian management styles and traditions. So let's now discuss about the concepts with the PowerPoint presentation. So dear learners, what we are going to discuss in this uh, video is that we will discuss about the managerial skills at various levels of management. We will also discuss about the Indian management styles and traditions. So these are the two concepts that we uh, will go through uh, in this video session and with this we will come to the end of uh, unit 3 that is the functions of management of the course principles of management and organization behavior. So let's start with the management skills at various levels. So the nature of the job becomes increasingly complex at each higher level because of the increase in the scope of authority and responsibility and therefore each higher level requires increased knowledge, broader perspective and greater skills. Management jobs are different from other jobs. It involves the obligation to make prudent use of human and material resources. It requires sound judgment to handle complex situations. And further, the nature of the job becomes more uh, complex. So, for the purpose of analysis, skills required uh, for a manager are classified under three uh, different heads or you may can uh, say skills that are technical skills, human skills and conceptual skills. These skills are exhibited in the figure uh, that I have put in the PowerPoint presentation here. Let us now discuss the skills uh, in this PowerPoint presentation. So here uh, you will see that technical skill refers to the ability to use the tools equipments, procedures, techniques and knowledge of a specialized field, the activity to use specific knowledge, methods and techniques in performing work. So the technical skills uh, is primarily concerned with the ways of doing the things and it implies proficiency in a specific field of activity. Technical skills are most important at the lower level of management that we have seen in our previous slide and because by the nature uh, their job involves supervision of the workers and effective supervision and coordination of the work of the subordinates therefore depends on the technical skill possessed by the lower level managers and any mayor supervisors without a sound knowledge of the job cannot make an effective supervision. Uh, so for uh, if we give an example then uh, the president of an oil company does not uh, need to know much about the technical details of drilling or for oil or how to refine it. Uh, so now let's discuss about human skills. The human skill is the ability to understand, uh, motivate and get along uh, with the other people. The skills is essential at every levels of management though uh, within the organization and but, uh, but is particularly important at the lower levels of manage, uh, management where the supervisors are frequent contact with the operating personals. Uh, human skills are primarily concerned with persons as contrasted with the things when a man is highly skilled uh, in employee relations. He is aware of the attitudes, assumptions and beliefs and recognizes their limitations as well as their usefulness. He or she accepts as an important fact of the life and existence of the view, viewpoints and feelings different from his own his or her own. So thus human skills refers to that ability of a manager who work effectively as a group member and to build cooperative efforts in the team he leads, he or she leads and it is the ability uh, to work with and understand and motivate people. Now let us discuss about the conceptual skills. Conceptual skills are the mental ability to coordinate and uh, integrate the organization's interest and activities. It refers to the ability to see the big picture. Like the conceptual skills also called uh, as design and problem solving skills. It involves the ability to see the organization and the various components of it as a whole. To understand how 
uh, its various parts and functions look together and to foresee how changes in any one of these may affect all the others. So conceptual skills extend to visualizing the relations of the organization to industry, to the community, and to the political and economical social forces of the nation as a whole, and even to the uh, forces which operates beyond the national boundaries. It is the creative force within the organization and a high degree of conceptual skills help in analyzing the environment and in identifying the opportunities and threats. So the three types of skills discussed so far that we have discussed are not mutually exclusive. In other words, uh, management jobs always requires all the three skills, but in different proportion, depending upon the levels of management. So there is a gradual shift in the emphasis from, uh, from the bottom uh, to the top of the pyramid of the management, um, levels of management. Uh, the technical skills and human skills are always uh, in great demand at the lower level of management, for it is there um, the productive processes and operations are carried out. And the need of conceptual skills uh, is greatest at the top levels of management. And obviously, the top managers are not often involved in the direct application of the specific methods and procedures and techniques compared to those at the lower levels of management. Now, let us discuss about the Indian management style and tradition. If there can be British style in management, American style or Japanese style, then why not an Indian style of management? Or to be more specific, is there any Indian styles of management? So when we look uh, in a larger perspective, the traditional Rajasthani carpenters, then Gujarati women, uh, women skills at the handicraft, uh, the wood covers of Karnataka show remarkable excellence in their work and production. We can take an example of our own uh, silk industry at Hualkuchi. And... Uh, the Muradabad uh, brassware workers are exporting their uh, products, though they may not aware of the modern concepts. Uh, but then how they are doing this? Uh, so legit paper run by the Indian women or the Udupi uh, hotels or OYO are other examples. Uh, we call this Indian ethos as the true spirit of indigenous management techniques, uh, which is expressed in the cases that I have discussed by the Indian supervisors and workers. There is excellence in India and we uh, noticed uh, this excellence searched for indigenous styles of management and then incorporated the concepts of Vedanta and yoga to give this a new shape. And side by side, we experimented with this uh, technique in modern industries, both public and private sector companies. We call this Indian ethos in management because first we learned this method from the common Indian workers like farmers, carpenters, uh, artisans and above all the Indian women and secondly the Vedantic concepts and yoga practices are incorporated. This techniques, the Indian ethos in management was applied and discussed in many companies and the result was very encouraging and more and more management consultants and teachers are uh, you know, joining this uh, movement and more and more companies are showing keen interest in this. So there are signs uh, that uh, business is moving towards a unified global theory of management and the practice of management and global com competitiveness is driven by the new technology. Visionary managers are needed to provide directions to the increasingly multicultural workforce that responds quickly to the customers and that uh, demand low cost quality products and services. So, dear learners, we have uh, discussed about the managerial skills that are needed at the various levels of management when we have also discussed about the Indian management styles. And uh, with these two concepts, we have come to the end of uh, this part of Unit 3, that is functions of management. And also we have come to the end of the unit, that is Unit 3, functions of management. So, um, in the unit uh, three, that is functions of management, we discuss we discuss the various concepts related to uh, the functions of management briefly, though, uh, like planning, organizing, staffing, controlling, organizing, then uh, budgeting, reporting. We discuss here. We discuss about management skills at various levels and Indian management styles and traditions, and. Uh, 
hope uh, this video has given you some idea about the concepts and thank you so much for watching this video thank you